Hello everyone and welcome to this month's best and worst of beauty from me. I am excited to talk about my products here for my pyramid. If you are new to my channel, new to these videos, whatever the case may be, I basically stole this idea many years ago from Dance Moms, my beloved, rest in peace. But basically, you know, where Abby would yell at the little girls and make them cry by making the pyramid of who is the best and who is the worst dancer for that week. I do that with my products. Which of these products were the worst? Which ones are a source of shame on the bottom of my pyramid and then we climb on up to the top of the pyramid. We slap ourselves in the face sometimes. It's all good because we're talking about some wonderful products. I really do. I've got some really good ones here this month that I've really been enjoying. I've got one product that was awful and then some that were just kind of meh but like on the good side of meh. Either way, these videos are always very long, so grab a snack, grab a drink, whatever you prefer, and then we can get started. We can start climbing and talking about which products I loved and hated this month. So let's go ahead, sing the song together, and then we can go ahead and do just that. It's the best and worst of beauty, whether good or bad, here's the down and dirty. Yeah. So first thing here, bottom of the pyramid for sure, this product I did not like at all. This is the Rimmel Lasting Finish 25 Hour Breathable Lightweight Medium Coverage Concealer. I had the shade 100 Fair. I don't know where they're getting medium coverage from. This concealer was very sheer. It's very watery. I did not like the consistency. I did not think it was blendable. So like it just, it made it really hard around like the edges, you know, when you're dabbing it out. It just looked very obvious that you had on concealer. And I just didn't think it did a good job. I don't like this sponge applicator on it. The hole is really big for where the concealer comes out, so if you try and use the sponge to blend, it just leaves little dots all over your face, and I just, I didn't like it. Like, I really don't think there was one thing about this concealer that I enjoyed. I didn't like the packaging. I didn't like the actual concealer. I didn't think it lasted well on me. Like, especially when I got oily, it just transferred right off my face. It was just not good. It was not good at all. I did not like it. Blah. Plus the shade range was awful. What did it have? Five shades? Six shades? Something like that. And they were all fairly light. I just did a whole review on this and the foundation as well, which I'm wearing the foundation today. I quite like the foundation. The foundation I need to test a little more before I can put it on this pyramid because I just tested these out like a couple days ago. <laughs> but I can definitely say after that first impression, this concealer was a no-go for me. This will never go on my face again. I will donate it to someone who hopefully will like it better than I did because I did not like it at all. <laughs> And now from here on out, you guys, everything on the pyramid is good, but I just, you know, some are better than others. And this one, I like it, but I don't love it. So we have got the NYX Away We Glow Illuminating Powder. This is in the shade Crushed Rose. I used this, I believe, in a first impressions video. And like I said, I do like this blush. I think it is very pretty. I haven't been using it with the highlight because there's another highlight that I've been using and loving this month, but I've been using these three blush colors all combined together and I think it is so pretty and it blends on the skin so smoothly, so nicely. The only part that knocks this down is the longevity isn't the greatest. I would say this blush lasts well on me for like maybe six hours and then from there on out it just fades and fades and I feel like at the end of the night you can barely see it on my face anymore. So that's where the major points come off because aside from that this is gorgeous. Like I said it just blends like butter into the skin so nicely, so smoothly and the color is gorgeous. It's one of those colors, the bright pink especially, that just like wakes up your face and makes you look healthy and alive. I really like that. But because the longevity isn't the greatest, I know that this is not something that I'll be reaching for much in the future. But you know, maybe if you only wear blush for a little bit every day and you don't care about longevity, I don't know, maybe you'll like this better. I just, yeah, longevity, it, it means a lot to me because when I wear my makeup, I'm usually wearing it for more than six hours. So other than that, I really like this blush. If longevity was better, this would get a much better spot on my pyramid. Then next up here on the pyramid, I have got a product that I got in a BoxyCharm. I just recently started doing BoxyCharm unboxings and testing out products and stuff here on my channel. So that's been a lot of fun and I found some wonderful products from that. One of which, it's good. 
It's not wonderful. I shouldn't have. That was bad wording choice on my part. But I've got a mascara here. This is the Butter London Double Decker Lashes Mascara. Now, for the most part, I do like this mascara. However, it's not perfect and it is certainly not something that I would purchase on my own or ever purchase in the future. That being said, I will use this up because it's a good enough mascara, but yeah. I hope that makes sense for you. The wand and everything is really unimpressive looking, like it just looks like a normal mascara wand, but I think the mascara wand works really well. I find that I hardly have any clumps whenever I use this. It's always very easy to apply. I think it looks great doubled up, you know, it's a double decker mascara. I mean, it doesn't mean you need to put on two coats, but I do like doing two coats of mascara and I think it looks great. And even then I don't have trouble with it clumping. It is a wetter formula of mascara. So if you don't like wet mascaras, you're probably not gonna like this one. The thing that I don't love about this mascara is that throughout the day it kind of weighs down my lashes and my lashes are pretty decently curled on their own and everything. Like I don't feel a need to use an eyelash curler with my lashes, but this makes my lashes just kind of droop, droop, droop near the end of the day. So <sighs> really disappointing because otherwise I mean even though this isn't a waterproof mascara I personally haven't had any problems with it like flaking or smudging on my lashes throughout the day I think it does really well in terms of longevity and whatnot but the fact that it weighs my lashes down it just it's not the best <sighs> otherwise it's good so much saliva otherwise it's good but yeah, like I said, I could never justify I mean, I think this is like a $20 mascara, and since I don't love it, there are just too many drugstore mascaras out on the market that are better than this, so it's been nice. I'm glad I was able to try it out, but meh, meh. <laughs> Next up here, last thing on the bottom of the pyramid, I feel like we are breezing through this month, you guys, but I've got another product from BoxyCharm, and it is this Cover FX Shimmer Veil. This is in the shade Amethyst. This is like a cream eyeshadow base. Now, the only reason that this is at the bottom of the pyramid is one reason, because otherwise, this is gorgeous. This is all I have on my eyes today, which I know my glasses kind of... But this has been so nice. I've been having troubles with my eyes this month. I had scratched one of my corneas and like I just haven't been wearing much eye makeup in general. But this has been so great just on days where I want to wear eye makeup, but either I don't have time or I'm lazy or whatever it is. I can just slap this on and it looks so pretty on its own. It shears out really nicely so it just blends right in. It doesn't have that like stark outline where it's like, okay, someone used a cream eyeshadow today. It just blends and it's beautiful. It's definitely sparkly and shimmery, but it's got that nice opalescence to it. It's like a nice pink color, the base of it is. But then, like I said, it's got that opalescent blue and purple shifty shine to it. It just adds a twinkle and brightness and loveliness to the eyes. I really like like it but the one thing that drags this down is the fact that it says that you don't have to use an eyeshadow primer underneath it no at least not on this oily girl's eyelids <laughs> at the end of the day even like I would say maybe three four hours in this creases on me if I don't have eyeshadow primer on underneath it if I do have eyeshadow primer on underneath it it lasts great and it looks beautiful at the end of the day but I just had to knock it because it didn't do that one part of what it claimed <sighs> and that one part of what it claimed made me really excited but that being said, I think this is gorgeous and something that I'm so happy to have in my collection. Moving on here to the second tier of the pyramid, I have got a product that it took me a second to get used to it because it's different from what I'm used to, but different doesn't necessarily mean bad and I have been enjoying this. I have got this right here. This is one of the new Anastasia Powder Bronzers. I got mine in the shade Tawny. This is vegan and cruelty free for those of you who do look for that in your products. I was really excited to test this out, you know, just trying to find a dupe for my beloved MAC Aphrodite Shell Extra Dimension Bronzer since that was limited edition. I adore that stuff. It works beautifully as a contour on me and what really intrigued me about this collection of bronzers from Anastasia is that they were supposed to be, you know, like not orange so you can and 
I, I shouldn't say should, but you know, you can use these as a contour. And this is a contour on me. Now, I love the packaging. I love that it's got the Anastasia logo. It's really cool. And it's just got a little button that you push and then you lift it up. It's got a huge, nice big mirror in there. And then the actual product itself is a nice like normal powder, you know? It's silky enough, it's a powder. I did not think it was gonna be as dark on me as it is, but I think I found out how to make it work. I just have to use a different brush than I typically use for my contour. With this, I have to use a very light, fluffy, not dense, tiny little kind of detailed cheek brush and then it works great. I mean the powder buffs out really beautifully. You kind of have to work with it like it can look a little stark but if you buff it in enough it blends in quite seamlessly into the skin. It's a look like you can tell I have on a contour powder but I think it's really pretty and I really like it. It's just different for me. So it took some getting used to, but I do really like this now that I've figured out how to make it work for me. It lasts all day and I really, I really like it. And next up, moving on to the next product here. I am really happy with this product and it especially means a lot to me because one of you recommended it to me. Kyle, thank you. I thanked you when I first tested this, but this is the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Long Wear Concealer. I have mine in the shade 1N. Kyle told me that this is like the most amazing concealer ever and I needed to try it because it was perfection. On me, it is almost perfection. I do really like it, but it is not as flawless as perfection on me. But I do really like it. Let me explain. First off, I know this is silly, but I love the packaging on this. It's oval shaped and it just feels cool in the hand. It just feels different from a round shape that we're used to, I feel like, with our cosmetics. And then the actual product is really nice. I personally find that it doesn't look good underneath my eyes. It looks fairly dry underneath my eyes, so I can't use it for an under eye concealer, which is one of the reasons why it's not perfect for me. But on pimples and blemishes, or like dark spots, this works really, really well. I really like, it's got like a tacky consistency to it, and I feel like it blends out really nicely and really smoothly into the skin. And it also lasts pretty darn well on me. Like I wouldn't say it lasts like a full day, like a 16 or 18 hour day, but I would say this lasts like 12 to 14 hours. So really it does a good job. And even then, you know, it just starts to fade. It's not like it completely wipes off or anything. So I really, really do like this for blemishes. Cause for me, it usually I would use something like the Tarte Shape Tape for blemishes and it's great. It works great, but it can look cakey and you can go overboard with it because of that stupid doe foot applicator which is just monstrous but this one I feel like it never really looks cakey ever I feel like even when I do kind of pile it on and so I just have really been liking this for blemishes like this is a really really nice concealer and I do really like it for those purposes. <laughs> Now moving on to the last spot on the second tier of the pyramid, I have got another mascara that I found this month, and it is this one. This is the L'Oreal Voluminous Superstar X Fiber Mascara. Now L'Oreal did send this to me, but I was not obligated to review it. I am not obligated to say anything about it, much less nice things about it. However, I do really, really like this mascara, you guys. This mascara had been getting a lot of hype on YouTube, I feel like, and I had actually purchased a tube of this for myself in the waterproof form, but then L'Oreal also sent one to me, so I was just like, well, I might as well just try it out. And then if I end up hating this one, maybe I will just return the waterproof one. But that's not the case. I will be keeping and have kept and will be testing the waterproof one eventually once this one runs out. I just don't like having a million mascaras open at once. It's just, it's so wasteful to me. But this one, even though it's not waterproof, it does pretty darn well on my lashes, you guys. I would say it flakes the tiniest little itsy bitsy bit at the end of the day. Hardly though, maybe like one fleck. It's barely anything. But what I really love about this is the way that it looks on the lashes. So it's a two-step mascara, but both steps are both black. So it's not like one of those ones where you put on the white coat and then you put a black coat over top of it. They're both black, but one is definitely like a preparatory 
is that an actual word? <laughs> it's like a prep step and then it's got like a more fibrous mascara that you put on top of it to kind of you know attach to the wet mascara and stuff and I just think the look is beautiful and not only is the mascara different in both ends but the wands are different on both ends. Both wands do a great job. I feel like my lashes just look super fluttery and lightweight and nice and something about this it does not clump on me like at all. It's a bit drier of a mascara, I would say. It's not like super dry, but it is on the drier side. So if you like that, you might want to give this a try. And I just think it looks great. It adds a little bit of volume. It adds length. And like I said, I just think it looks super nice and fluttery and delightful on my lashes. It doesn't weigh them down throughout the day. I really, really like this mascara. Plus this one, since it's not waterproof, it's super easy to remove at the end of the day as well. So just overall, this is a fantastic mascara. I really, really like it. Now moving on, we are on to the second to the top tier of the pyramid here. I have a product that, oh, do I love. This is one of those products where I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to put you away, but like, it's kind of my job. I have to be rotating products. Oh my goodness, you guys, this month has been a love affair with this here highlighter. This is a highlighter from Models Own. This is the Sculpt and Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade Peach Pearl 02. I bought this completely on a whim. I'm pretty sure it was one of those purchases where like I was making an Ulta order and I needed just a few more bucks to get free shipping or something. So I just threw this in my cart. I was like, eh, it looks pretty. Like, we'll give it a shot. And oh my gosh, you guys, did you hear that? This has a magnetic closure for a drugstore highlighter. Are you kidding me? <sighs> so good. Plus has a big mirror in here for a drugstore highlighter. Are you kidding me? So nice. I was very impressed with that aspect. Plus I like it, you know, it's slim and everything. Then the actual highlight. Oh, stop. It's so, so pretty. It's one of those nice like pinky colors that's got kind of that opalescent shift to it So it's got a little bit of that purpley blue hue when it catches the light just right and it just looks so gluey It looks so gluey <laughs> I crack myself up. I think that was a mix of like goddess-like and glowy came out as gluey Okay, well either way this looks so good on the cheeks. I just think it looks gorgeous and it can definitely be built up. Like you can put this on super sheer and you can put this on super blinding. I've been liking somewhere in the middle, you know? I like to make people squint with my highlights sometimes, but I never like to blind them completely. But I can get whatever eye damage inducing power level of highlight that I want with this. I just think it is so pretty, melts into the skin, lasts all freaking day, like this stuff does not budge on my skin. I just love it. I love it so much. It's one of those products too where you like touch it and you're like, eh, it's not like the smoothest powder. Like it's not gritty necessarily, but it's not like, it doesn't feel like the Anastasia powder or anything, but it doesn't matter. This goes on beautifully, lasts beautifully. I love the packaging, everything about this. Win, 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 win. I love this highlight. It's making me very sad that I have to put this away now. But I mean, at least I'll have it and can use it in the future again because oh my goodness, I can promise you, I will be using this in the future a lot. And now a second to the top on the pyramid here, I, this is another product where it's like look, absolute love affair. All the stutters, all the noises, just chin time. So much chin love. You guys, I have absolutely fallen for these glosses from Urban Decay. Yes, they sent these to me for review. However, A, I was not obligated to, and B, certainly was not obligated to say nice things about them, but I love these glosses. Like, I can't, well, I can say some negative things about them. There are a couple things about them, but overall, these glosses, I think I've worn these almost every day since I got them. There have been a couple no makeup days, but every day I've worn makeup, I'm pretty sure this has been what I have put on my lips. One of these anyways, <laughs> not all at once. Although some of these are great as layering glosses. Now these are the Urban Decay Hi-Fi Shine Ultra Cushion Lip Glosses. These are the ones that I kept. These are the shades that I enjoyed the most. 12 of them, yikes. 
but I just love them so much. I love the packaging. It's nice and sleek. You can see the gloss color. It's silver. It's really, it's really lightweight, so it doesn't like feel super expensive or anything. You know, it's just like a plasticky acrylic kind of a feeling, but I like the slimness and lightweightness of it. Like it, that really doesn't bother me. One thing that I did say in the review, and it's one of those ones where it like does all the work for you there. I don't love the applicator. I think it's something with the applicator anyways. It's just, it's one of those glasses where you kind of, if you want full opacity, you're gonna have to dip in like at least two or three times to layer it. Oh crap. Oh, not too bad. Okay. <laughs> You do have to layer these, but some people would say that's definitely a plus since that means you can wear these super sheer and very light on your lips, but you can layer it to get a more full opaque look to them. Some of them won't ever be like completely opaque, like the shimmery ones and the glittery hollow ones. I know some people got very mad in that review video because these are not true hollows. I didn't realize hollow needed to have rainbow in it to be hollow, but I think that makes sense now that people said that to me. In any case, I think there's four hollow shades in this collection hollow. I think they're gorgeous, like really, really pretty and are fantastic as toppers. I mean, they can work on their own too, but they look gorgeous on top of like the cream shades and stuff. But overall, I just, I love the color selection. There's some fun colors. Like, where is it? This like yellow gold. Are you kidding me? so pretty and also one thing some of them i don't know why it must be something with the light or i'm not exactly sure but something happens where in real life i promise you for some reason on camera the ones that didn't look patchy in real life some of them came across as patchy on camera i don't know why that's why i didn't mention anything about it in the video because i couldn't see that they looked patchy because in real life they didn't but i mean i guess that's something to note especially with ones like this gold one that's why i like using these more as toppers but that being said i just think these are gorgeous they last so well like this is the kind of gloss that lasts on my lips if I'm just sipping on a water bottle or something five six hours at least and it still looks gorgeous and nice and opaque like just really nicely long lasting I love the feeling of them they have that cooling feeling for maybe about an hour after you first apply them and then that goes away they've also got that sweet vanilla mint smell and taste to them which also it's fairly strong in the beginning but I love the smell of it but that does the smell and the taste end up going away after about an hour or two of having them on your lips I would say there's like the slightest little bit of stick to them I personally like that because it lets me know that it's not slip sliding around on my face all day. They stay in place. They're gorgeous. They fade gracefully. I just, everything about these glosses, they might be my favorite gloss formula ever. I've only really got a few glosses I would say that I like love, like the buxom ones. These are up there with those. These are fantastic. I, I really, really like them. <laughs> And then moving on, gosh, you know, I feel like we were just zipping through it in the beginning. You can tell when a product is just kind of meh with me. I don't have much to say about it. And then we get into these products where I like love them and I can't stop gushing and gushing about them. So moving on, top of the pyramid. Oh, you guys. I mean, I already knew I loved this product. I'm sure I've included it in a Best and Worst of Beauty before. Surely I have. Either way. This is top of the pyramid this month for sure. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer Primer Plus Moisturizer in one. This is one of my favorite primers ever. I'm pretty sure this works like just as well, exactly as well as my Guerlain Meteorite Space that I love. This is also like I think half the price of that. So if you're looking for a dupe that is much more affordable, sure it might not look as pretty as the Guerlain. I mean, it's it looks nice. It's a nice packaging, but it doesn't have the pretty balls. Ugh. We're gonna stop there. This primer is fantastic. So, so good. And I have been using it this month because my face has been an absolute mess and I've had some crusty bits that needed some help and I just wanted to give them some extra moisture. I mean, I already use a moisturizer and a serum and stuff on my skin, but even more moisture with this primer and it just feels so good on the skin. It's got that cooling, like it really does feel like your skin is taking a huge gulp of water when you put this on. It is so refreshing and nice feeling. And then once you rub it in, it kind of goes in like a serum. So it feels kind of watery and everything. 
it feels so nice and then it gets that little bit of a tack to it which I love for a primer. Same thing as the Guerlain. Goes on like a serum, gets that nice tackiness to it and then your foundation and stuff sitting on top of it just sticks to your face. It really does. This prolongs the wear of my makeup so so much all through the day, works great on my oily skin, like does not make me any more oily than I would get. I mean it's not an oil controlling primer but to get what I'm saying, it does great with my skin, prolongs my makeup wear, feels great on my skin, especially those crusty dry bits, the sad bits, the hurting bits. It just feels really, really good. I really like this primer a lot. It's a wonderful one and I think it would work for a lot of different people out there. So yeah, I mean, even regardless of that, I love it. This is my pyramid. So top of my pyramid for this month. For sure. There you go, you guys. There was my pyramid for the month of March here. We are now going into the second quarter, right? Second quarter of the year. All right, let's do this, you guys. I hope March was good to you. I hope you're having a good 2018 so far. I am excited to move on into April. I've got some I've just I've got some exciting stuff coming up. Not necessarily Well, one of the things is for you guys there will be an exciting thing for you guys eventually. It's nothing like, I'm doing a makeup collab. It's nothing like that. I just, I'm going on a trip and I'm gonna take you guys with me. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm just excited, you know, let's move on, onwards and upwards here. Like I said, I hope you all had a great month. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I had on my pyramid and seeing some good products, some not so good products, some things that you might or might not want to try out for yourself. If you did enjoy this video, found it helpful, whatever the case may be, please do go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate it. And if you're new here, Hey, hi, hello, how are you? You can go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more content from me in the future. You can become a member of my casserole family here on my channel. I'd love to have you here. And as always, I just hope you guys are all doing well. And until next time, just stay well until then. Bye!